Hare Krishna. So welcome all the Bhakti Sastri students <laughs> in a great number. <clears throat> Sila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, well, you can give a lecture even to the wall. At least there are four sides of wall that can hear you. And those who stay in the wall, like the, the ants, the germs, the bacteria, they all get purification. So there is no loss of having Krishna Kata. <laughs> so I'm so fortunate that here there are four devotees assembled here. <clears throat> okay. Oma Gyana Timirandashya, Gyanan Jana Salakaya, Chaksuran Militam Jena Tasma, Sri Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Shwayam Rupa Kada Mahyam, Dadati Swapadantikam, One Day Aham Sri Kutu Sri Yuta Padakamalam, Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Cha, Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Shahagana Ragunatam, Vitam Tam Sajivam. Sadvaitam, Shavadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Deva, Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lanta, Sri Visakam Tamsi. <coughs> hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpati. Go Pesa, Go Pika Kantha, Radha Kantha Namustu. Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneswari, Vrishabhani, Stuti Devi. <coughs> Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Tarubya Chakripa Sindhu Jai. Patitanam Bhade Bhyo Vaisnava Bhyo Namo Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gradhar. Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare. <coughs> Mukam karoti va chalam pangulam vayate girim jat kripa tamaham vande sri gurun dinatarm paramananda manavam sri chaitanya ishwara katanjana smite yasmin duskaram sukaram bhave vismrite viparitam shat sri chaitanya namamitam <coughs> Hare Krishna. So welcome finally today we will start. Hare Krishna. With the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Yes, uh, Viswambar Kripa Prabhu. Hare Krishna, you want to say something? Hare Krishna Prabhu. No, no, I'm just saying Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble presence. Yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for your greeting. So in the 17th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, finally, uh, we ended up by our discussion where <clears throat> Krishna explains to Arjuna that by reciting the three words, the Om Tat Sat, that's actually indicating the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And whenever we do something, uh, it would be nice <clears throat> if it is followed by uh, chanting the Om Tat Sat, referring to the Supreme Lord. Or in our case, because in our place now, in Kali Yuga, our time, we can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <coughs> so the whole idea is that to offer everything to Krishna and everything should be related to Krishna, should be connected to Krishna. So that was the idea of the last part of the 17th chapter. And in fact, actually throughout the first, second, up to the 17th chapter, we were talking so much about devotional service. And ultimately, devotional service is the goal of our life. And uh, Srila Prabhupada in the previous acharyas also explained that actually the Bhagavad Gita <coughs> is completed in the 17th chapter because that's like the conclusion of the last part of our discussion that everything should be connected to krishna that's devotional service so chanting uh, the om tat sat uh, chanting so in our case we are chanting Hare krishna maha mantra and the 18th chapter <coughs> is actually Again, uh, we will be repeating what we have discussed previously. Okay. It's like a roundup, the conclusion, the conclusion roundup. We remind uh, ourselves again from the beginning what we have discussed and till the end, we conclude something. <coughs> so chapter 18, conclusion, 
the perfection of renunciation. Krishna explains the meaning of renun uh, renunciation and the effects of the modes of nature on human consciousness <coughs> and activity. He explains Brahman realization, the glories of the Bhagavad Gita, and the ultimate conclusion of the Gita. The highest path of religion is absolute, unconditional loving surrender unto Krishna, which frees one from all sin, bring one to complete enlightenment, and enables one to return to Krishna's eternal spiritual abode. <coughs> So here it is. The entire Bhagavad Gita is concluded in the 17th chapter. And to emphasize the goal of surrender to Krishna, the essence of the previous chapters is taught in this, the final chapter. Here Krishna concludes, as he has done throughout the Bhagavad Gita, that one should practice devotional service. So ultimately, Bhagavad Gita concluded at Sarvad Harman Parityaja by surrendering. Uh, ourselves to Krishna, giving up all the materially <coughs> motivated religious activities and just surrender to Krishna. So that uh, Sarva Dharman, uh, the Sarva Dharman, uh, the Dharma refer uh, in that verse is actually the materialistic Dharma. That Dharma which is materially motivated should be given up. Parityaja. <coughs> So topic of discussion in the 18th chapter. We see here, karma yoga, superiority of working in devotion over renunciation of work, one to 12. So we already discussed a lot uh, about karma yoga in the first six chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, especially chapter three and chapter five. <coughs> Jnana yoga in the chapter four, we talk about Jnana yoga. The modes of nature, chapter 14, we cover this. <coughs> Worshipping Krishna through one's work. This is also specifically about chapter 5. This is called uh, Niskama Karma Yoga. Worshipping Krishna through one's work, Karma Yoga. In the chapter 9 also, we, uh, sorry, yeah, chapter 9, we talk also about Karma Yoga in the verse. Uh, yet karusi yet astasi. <clears throat> from jnana yoga to pure devotional service so this is the yoga ladder surrender to krishna so the process of surrender is actually described very elaborately in the ninth chapter man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mam ewa shiyas yuktayam atmana mat parayana so that's the process of surrender that's also a process of surrender. So the ninth chapter is actually full of this process of surrendering to Krishna. <clears throat> In the tenth chapter, we talk about the, we discuss about the Chatu Sloki Gita, by which actually even the first Chatu Sloki Gita, Aham Sarvasya Prabhu, that established the Sambandha, Abhidya, and Prayojan. It covers everything. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Prabhavati. Everything emanates from Krishna. Everything comes from Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything. That is Sambandha. And then Mata Sarvam Prabhavati. Iti Matua Bhajante Ma. So Bhajante is the most small service, is the process, the Abhideya. And then Matwa Bhajanti Ma Buddha Bhava, Buddha Bhava. The word bhava means our feeling. Those who are intelligent, they will worship Krishna with full heart, with full love. So our prayojana is love, pure devotional service to Krishna. <coughs> the prema, prema, love for Krishna. So that verse itself covers the whole thing, the whole philosophy. <laughs> so that's the process of surrender. And the last part, Arjuna agrees to fight and victory is assured by Sanjaya. So practically, we have covered everything. We have covered everything throughout the 17th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> so we will, today we will discuss uh, the first verse up to the 12th verse. 
but karma yoga's superiority of working in devotion over renunciation of work. Krishna began his summary of all he has previously spoken by retiring his prescription that Arjuna renounced the fruit of work, not work itself. So there is a difference between uh, renouncing the fruit of the work and renouncing the work. <clears throat> what Arjuna wanted to do in the beginning is that he wanted to renounce the work itself. Guru Rahatwa Himahanu Bhavan Sreyo Bhuktum Vaikshamapi Haloke Hatwarta Kaman to Guru Nihaiwa Bunjiya Bhogam Rudira Pradidhan. Arjuna said, Let me go to the forest and live as a mendicant. <laughs> <clears throat> but that is not advised by Krishna. So the correct way is that renounce the fruit of the work, not the work itself. Therefore, Krishna mentioned in the second chapter, karma neva dikaraste. Do your work, but the result is uh, depend on me. Krishna is the uh, sanction giver uh, or the one who is deciding uh, whether we'll get good or bad. <coughs> Verses 1 to 12 are a summary of the first six chapters, six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, which describe Karma Yoga. <clears throat> okay. We shall start. Text number one. O Arjuna, O mighty arm one, I wish to understand the purpose of renunciation, Yaga, and the renounce order of life, Sannyas, O killer of Kesi Demon, master of the senses. <clears throat> So Arjuna is asking Krishna, what is the difference between Tyaga and Sanyas? So Tyaga means actually the renunciation and Sanyas is the renounce order of life. <clears throat> Whether there any difference between these two things, Tyaga or Sanyas, we will see. This is Prabhupada's purport. As in the second chapter, a synopsis of the whole subject matter was described in the 18th chapter, also the summary <clears throat> Of all instruction is given, the purpose of life is indicated to be renunciation and attainment of the transcendental position above the three material modes of nature. Arjuna wants to clarify the two distinct subject matters of Bhagavad Gita, namely renunciation, tyag, and renouncer of life, sannyas. Thus, he is asking the meaning of these two words. <coughs> Two words used in this verse to address the Supreme Lord. What is that? Rishikesh and Kesi Nisudana. These are very significant. Rishikesh means Krishna, who is the master of the senses. Uh, we come back again to the first chapter. Uh, if, uh, if you remember that how Arjuna addresses Lord Krishna in different names, <coughs> like Madhava, Madhusudana, Kesi Nisudana. Rishi Kesa, O Govinda, O Janardana. So we come back to that uh, scene again in the first chapter. So here, as Sula Prabhupada explained, Krishna is, uh, Rishi Kesa is Krishna, the master of all senses, who can always help us attain mental serenity. Arjuna requests him to summarize everything in such a way that he can remain equipoise, yet he has some doubts and doubts are always compared to demons. So because this doubt is just like demon. Next, Arjuna addressed Krishna as <coughs> Kesi Nisudana, the killer of the Kesi demon. Kesi was a most formidable demon who was killed by the Lord. Now Arjuna is expecting Krishna to kill the demon of doubt. So you see, come back to the first chapter again. <coughs> <coughs> Anybody would like to read text number two here? <clears throat> Let me call upon Kumudaksa Prabhu. Yes, okay. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> the Supreme Sonity of God has said, the giving up of activities that are based on material desire is what great learned men call the renounced order of life, sannyas. And giving up the results of all activities is what the wise call renunciation. Or mm. <coughs> Can you continue? Yes. This one? The performance of activities 
for result has to be given out. This is the instructions of Bhagavad Gita. But activities leading to advanced spiritual knowledge are not to be given up. Thus, will be made clear in the next verses. Yeah. So the question still arise. Are Sanyas and Tiaga the same or different? <laughs> Anybody would like to give uh, his thought on this? Whether Sanyas or Tiaga, they are the same or different? Um, sanyasa is the uh, art, uh, is you know social in the social in the social, um, social order it? social order it means that like uh, what is the situation of the person in the social but um, tiaga is like more like a, in the in the person itself mm. so the activities of uh, itself is tiaga but the sanyas is like you know like occupation or not, or not occupation it's like like social status mm. interesting thank you very much uh, 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 yes uh, so the tiaga is that uh, the one who work while remaining detached from the fruit of work Mm. And the sannyas is one remain renounced from the activity. Basically, it can be a gyan yoga as well. Mm. The renounces. One renounce activities. That is called renounce order, order of life. Mm. Tyaga means like one doing work, but remain detached from the result of the work. Mm. Fruit of the work. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, there is an explanation by Srila Prabhupada that the sannyas is renunciation of material work okay still because we cannot stop of doing some activities so we have to act somehow or other but sannyas is a person who is uh, renouncing any material work any material activities that's why sannyas is the highest order in the society highest uh, order in the society because he is completely renouncing himself with the material activities. But then also depend on whether he's a Vaisnava sannyas or he's simply a Gyani or Mayawadi sannyas, as you mentioned. Thank you very much. So sannyas is the status, you can say like that status, and Tiaga is the activities, the activities. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, you raise your hands earlier, please. <clears throat> Same thing with, with that, that Vishwambar Kripa Prabhu. Okay, fine. Text number three. Somebody Prabhu, died. one question. Oh yeah, please. So in the text one, if you see that a lot say the purpose of the life is two things. One is the renunciation and the attainment of transcendental position above the three modes of nature. Mm. Right, so here is saying goal is renunciation, not the renounce order. Okay, right. <clears throat> it's it means basically saying to renounce the result of the activity, not to resound, renounce the and sannyasa is basically you are renouncing the fruit of the activity and the activity itself. So Krishna is encouraging the activity, but he's encouraging. So he's encouraging you to renounce the fruit of the activity, but not the activity, right? And that's right. why he uh, used, that's why he chose the renunciation about the renounce order of life in the purpose of life in the first text. Oh, that was Arjuna's question, the first text. Yeah. Yeah, but in Prabhupada said in the commentary, right, uh -huh. that the purpose of the life as per chapter two of the 18 is the renounce, <clears throat> renunciation and attainment of transcendental position. Right, right. So yeah. Krishna trying to encourage uh, not to giving up the activities, but to give Correct. up the result of the activities. Giving result up in the it. sense, giving up in the sense of we are detached. We are not. Uh, we are not attached. Okay. We are not expecting uh, the result of our activities because the idea is that <clears throat> uh, ultimately the result is awarded by Krishna. So our, our business is just to do our Swadharma. 
that what Krishna wanted uh, to tell Arjuna here. Just perform your Swadharma. So actually, as we have discussed in the previous classes many times, that by this kind of mentality, actually one will be free from the reaction of one's uh, karma or activities. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Text number three. Maybe with one more problem, you want to read this? Um, yes. Some learned men declare that all kind of fruity activity should be given up as faulty, yet other sages maintain that act of sacrifice, charity, and penance should never be abandoned. Mm. There are many activities in the Vedic literature which are subjected subject of contention. For instance, it is said that an animal can be killed in a sacrifice, yet some maintain that animal killing is completely abominable. Although animal killing in a sacrifice is recommended in the Vedic literature, an animal is not considered to be killed. The sacrifice is to give a new life to the animal. Sometimes the animal is given a new life after being killed in the sacrifice, and sometimes the animal is promoted immediately to the human form of life. Some say that animals should be always be avoided, and others say that for a specific uh, sacrifice, it is good. All these different opinion on sac sacrificial activity and now be clarified by the Lord Himself. Yeah. <clears throat> so in the text number three, actually, there is a debate uh, whether uh, killing animals on the sacrifice uh, is good or not. But the principle here is that as far as sacrifice is concerned, so killing the animal on sacrifice is actually fine because we are giving <clears throat> a promotion to the soul of that uh, of that animal or what you like giving the promotion to that soul who is entrapped in the body of the animal but <clears throat> as the as the time is passing you know so people actually taking the advantage uh, of the animal killing on the sacrificial arena to gratify their tongue that's uh, that's why the buddha incarnation to place lord buddha appear just to bewilder uh, sorry just to stop uh, the animal killing <coughs> otherwise uh, animal killing in the sacrificial arena is fine we see like yudhisthira maharaj he's performing rajasuya sacrifice so he's killing the horses like prithu maharaj also but uh, because the brahmanas are qualified, the mantras which are chanted actually so powerful that immediately uh, after the animal is killed and offered the fire of sacrifice, so they get a promotion immediately and get the human form of life in their next life. But in the Kali Yuga, because nobody is qualified, no qualified brahmana, so those days, when they wanted to perform sacrifice, the fire is created by mantra. By mantra, by chanting some mantra, fire will be invoked. <clears throat> I heard uh, one class by Navina Nirada Prabhu, if you know him. Like he's a very famous book distributor. He's kind of a very close associate of Vaisiseka Prabhu. So he mentioned that during his initiation, during his initiation ceremony, because uh, the fire is small. When the hot tree pours some ghee, the fire got extinguished. <laughs> Immediately the hot tree take uh, lighter and light again the fire. So that's actually the proof. There is no qualified Brahmana in Kali Yuga. <clears throat> so that, that's one of the reasons why Lord Buddha appeared to stop the animal killing, although it is, okay, although it is uh, argued that this uh, animal killing is for sacrifice, but ultimately it is just for sense gratification to eat the meat. Srila Prabhupada said, well, if you are addicted to eat meat, so still you can kill, but uh, you have to kill by yourself, not by organizing a slaughterhouse. Because uh, there is a mantra actually before you are killing an animal. So I don't know what is exactly that mantra. Srila Prabhupada mentioned that. 
So in, uh, we are saying actually, now I kill you. And then in the next life, you will kill me. This is called uh, Mimamsa. Uh, Mimamsa. Mim yeah. <clears throat> Maybe you have heard this. This, this is called Mimamsa. Now Mim I eat you. In the next life, you will eat me. So in that way, actually, we are fully conscious uh, of the consequences of the animal killing. But this slaughterhouse is completely like in the mode of ignorance. Devastating. <clears throat> Text number four. Prabhu, uh, sorry, I want to yeah, add yeah. one comment on this one. Sure, uh, sure. Recently, recently, I was reading Bhagavatam on the Abrish Maharaj, Canto 9. Mm. And in that one, you were saying that Amrish Maharaj was doing a yagya also. And there was also in the next chapter, is the uh, Harish Chandra was also, um, he was doing animal sacrifice to the Varuna, right? So, uh, Prabhupada was saying the same thing here that. Uh, in Vedic literature, the animal sacrifice is recommended and also it is condemned both ways. So I think here it is saying is <coughs> if the activity is doing for the advancement of spiritual activity, mm. um, that uplift one spiritual <coughs> level, like sacrifice, just like he's saying sacrifice for purification of one heart, then I think it's it's recommended. But if the activities are doing on the for material desire, just like uh, above in the 18.2, then it is not that it is abominable. It's not recommended. Yeah. So I think that's why I'm trying to find a connection between 18.1, 2, and 3. And that's why Krishna is saying renunciation is important because to renounce the result of all activity, mm. even it's a material or spiritual activity. And sannyas means you are giving up the activity, work itself. Mm. So work is sometimes important if it is done on a spiritual platform Correct. for, uh, for one own and one. And that's why Krishna is saying the goal is Tyaga, uh, not the Sannyasa. Because in Sannyasa, like, you are not doing any activity, whether it's material or spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's what I understand this 18.2 and 18.3. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Yes, <coughs> And yeah, sorry, what I'm saying is Amrish Maharaj and Prithu Maharaj, they are doing all sacrifices. Yeah. And they are even kind of a, a devotee, but they are doing for the spiritual upliftment. Mm, correct. For the Praja also. Yeah. 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 In addition to that, like it is uh, interesting that how Indra was in anxiety when Prithu Maharaj performing the sacrifice. Actually, Prithu Maharaj didn't have any material intention to perform that. Uh, Rajasuya sacrifice, but Indra was so in anxiety because that is the different mentalities when a devotee, pure devotee, or those who are non devotees, or devotees who are still afflicted by material desires. Uh, so their mentality is different while performing sacrifice. Indra also does sacrifice, <clears throat> but that's for. Uh, putting uh, more credit into his material account, into his material punya. Thank you very much, Viswambar Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. So should yeah. I read the four? Continue. Uh, let's call upon somebody okay. else here. Let's say Rishi Kumar Prabhu, welcome. You may read this verse, Prabhu, on the screen. Rishi Kumar Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. <coughs> Uh, sir, read Prabhu. Yeah, please read it. Oh, uh, in uh, Bhagavad Gita 18.4, oh, best of the um, Bharata. Now, hear my judgment about renunciation. Oh, tiger among men, renunciation is declared in the scriptures to be of three kinds. You can continue. Uh, although there are differences <coughs> of opinion about renunciation. Here, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, gives the judgment. It should be taken as final. After all, the Vedic, the Vedic Vedas are different laws given by the Lord. Here, the Lord is personally present, and His words should be, His words should be taken as final. So, Krishna mentioned here that <coughs> He will give the final conclusion, <laughs> the final judgment. So, let's hear. So here, text number five. Yagya dana tapa karma na tyajam karyam evatar 
yagyo danam tapas chayva pavanani <coughs> manishinam. Acts of sacrifice, charity, and penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. Indeed, sacrifice, charity, and penance purify even the great souls. <coughs> There are many purificatory process, processes for advancing a human being to a spiritual life. The marriage ceremony, for example, is considered to be one of these sacrifices. It is called Vivaha Yagya. Sude Sanyasi, who is in the renounced order of life and who has given up his family relationship, encouraged the marriage ceremony. The Lord says, the Lord says here that any sacrifice which is meant for human welfare should never be given up. Vivaha Yagya, the marriage ceremony, is meant to regulate the human mind so that it may become peaceful for spiritual advancement. <clears throat> for most men, this Vivaha Yagya should be encouraged even by the person in the renowned order of life. Sannyasis should never associate with women. But that does not mean that one who is in the lower stages of life, a young man, should not accept a wife in the marriage ceremony. <coughs> so, yeah, Sila Prabhupada mentioned here. Why is Sila Prabhupada mentioned here? Because even he himself, uh, in the beginning of our movement, he himself conducted personally, uh, conducted personally for the Vivaha Yagya of his disciples. Because in the beginning, you know, <clears throat> his disciples mostly came from the hippie background. So they don't know uh, whether you know, marriage is important or not. Because people in the West, I would, I, I mean, <laughs> they are staying together, you know, no marriage, and they have sex also. So freely mingle. So for them to have sex uh, with your, uh, with their, <clears throat> girlfriends or boyfriends or even for the uh, with the person whom they met for the first time that's all right uh, for them so that's how actually it is very degraded uh, the culture is very degraded that's why marriage is a very important uh, yagya uh, vivaha ceremony is very important actually to help <clears throat> to uplift the consciousness of the human society because uh, if somebody uh, has sex without marriage, so what is the difference between human and the animals? So they are the same animal. They are not bound by the laws, you know, by laws, because they don't have intelligence, higher, higher intelligence. Uh, their intelligence is simply uh, limited based on ahadnitra bhaya maituna. Uh, but human society, like we can <clears throat> understand better. That's why rules and regulation in the scriptures, uh, they are meant for the human society. So marriage is very important. Otherwise, uh, when people have sex freely, uh, mingle freely, and, you know, so the Varna Sankara will appear. Like uh, nowadays, we find there are so many children uh, without father. So only mother without father, because nowadays in uh, material association, uh, people, they don't get married, they stay together. And as soon as the woman is pregnant, the man will run away. <laughs> this is the situation. <clears throat> and many abortion taking place also. So marriage is very much encouraged. And because not everybody is free from sexual desire, so dharma virudh bhuti su kamosmi bharata shabha. Uh, Krishna mentioned that uh, sex is actually, I am sex, Krishna says. Dharma virudh bhuti su kamo asmi. So what kind of sex? Sex which is <coughs> not against the sastric injunction. So that is uh, very sacred. Uh, sex is very sacred thing. It is very interesting also, this uh, word here, yagya dana tapa karma. So this <clears throat> activities, 
yagya, dana, tapa. So these are uh, just like Sigla uh, Balade Vidya Bhushana, he commented, just like in the stem, in the stem of a lotus flower. <coughs> What is there in the stem of the lotus flower? It contains some fibers. So fibers uh, are there. I have seen one video that in Cambodia, whether Kumudaksa Prabhu has seen or Gudawatar Prabhu here has seen, that in Cambodia actually, people making uh, thread, making cloth from the fiber of the, uh, from the fiber which is there in the lotus flower stem. <laughs> it's very, uh, interesting. So just like uh, these fibers, uh, it is there inside the stem of the lotus flower, Baladev Vidya Bhushana said, these activities like jagya, sacrifice, dana, giving charity, and penance, uh, tapa, uh, should never be given up. So these three activities actually uh, contain knowledge uh, by which we can get purification. Uh, that's why Krishna mentioned here that even uh, <clears throat> the great soul get purified by these three activities, sacrifice, charity, and penance. Like Krishna himself also giving charity. Many great kings like Ambaris Maharaj also giving charity. Uh, Lord Krishna giving charity. King Riga giving charity. Penance, of course, performing uh, penance or austerities. <clears throat> of course, uh, the three ashramas, Brahmachari, Vanaprastha, and Sannyasi, they are mostly performing penance. But Grihastha also <coughs> encouraged to perform some uh, level of austerity and sacrifice. Sacrifice is mainly the duty of uh, the Grihastha. Sacrifice, we have to conduct jagya on the regular basis charity dana again this is actually pertaining sacrifice and charity mostly for the grihastha and penance uh, for the another three ashramas but it doesn't mean that uh, the grihastha is, doesn't perform any uh, austerity or penance so as far as we in krishna conscious uh, krishna consciousness society are concerned so we are performing all this, like sacrifice, yagya, so the Sankirtan yagya, that is our sacrifice, charity. So we are giving charity in the form of food for life, prasadam distribution, <clears throat> which is also, again, very much encouraged for those who are grihasas. If we read the seventh canto, chapter 14 of the Bhagavatam, they are actually elaborately explained by Srila Narad Muni to Yudhisthira Maharaj about the duty of the grihastas and charity is actually one of the main duties of the grihastha. Penance, of course, in <clears throat> grihastha ashram also, uh, we perform some uh, austerity penance, like eating only prasadam. That was mentioned also in the seventh canto, chapter 14 by Narad Muni, that grihastha uh, should eat only prasadam. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, there's a lecture by Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada mentioned the Grihastha cannot accept charity, <laughs> but a Grihastha Brahmana, he can accept charity. You see, because the Grihasthas, they are considered to be uh, the father of the another three ashramas. So the father's duty is to maintain the another uh, three ashramas. Uh, the father's duty is to maintain his, uh, his son. <coughs> His children. So these three ashramas compare just like the children and the father, Grihastha. So the father should take care. But a Grihastha Brahmana, Prabhupada mentioned here, he can accept charity, but he will not, I mean to say, accumulate money by taking charity. Whatever he gets, he must spend them. Dana Pratigraha. Pratigraha means accept. <clears throat> but he cannot keep in bank, a bank balance. He must, whatever extra he has got, he must immediately give in charity. Then he can accept. A Grihastha Brahmana accept charity. <coughs> <coughs> so Brahmana, 
dana pratigraha patan patan yajan yajan dana pratigraha so accepting accepting charity and giving charity dana means giving pratigraha means to accept so a brahmana actually a real brahmana should not have any bank account <laughs> as the robot mentioned here that in the ancient time we find that a brahmana will beg in the morning and then uh, whatever he gets uh, he will cook that and then any extra he will distribute to those who are in need uh, he will not keep uh, for the next day uh, this is a real brahmana in the ancient time a brahmana will not keep uh, something for himself uh, for the next day because a brahmana is depending very much upon uh, the lord's mercy and then what about the maintenance for the next day he will start begging again so begging is actually a special privilege of the brahmana okay <coughs> special privilege of the brahmana satriya doesn't beg satriya they have the aishwarya bhav the the mood of uh, a controller aishwarya so if satriya wants something he doesn't beg uh, he will fight to get it <laughs> but in the case of the pandavas we find that they are actually begging for the five villages well that is exceptional as far as uh, <clears throat> vaisnavas are concerned uh, so vaisnavas sometimes they may uh, use their anger and violence but if it is not very necessary so vaisnava by nature they are very humble so the pandavas uh, asking for the five villages just like begging uh, but they didn't get what they want so fight uh, war taking place <coughs> okay text number six anybody would like to read that let's call uh, wanamali prabhu you would like to read that all these activities should be performed without attachment or any acceptation of results. They should be performed as a matter of duty. O oh, son of Pritha, that is my final opinion. Yeah, so this is Krishna's final opinion. Can you continue a little bit to read this purport on the screen? Although all sacrifices are purifying, one should not accept any result by such performances in other words all sacrifices which are meant for material advancement in life should be given up but sacrifices that purify one's existence and elevate <coughs> one's spiritual play plane should not be stopped everything that leads to Krishna conscious must be encouraged. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also it is said that any activity which leads to devotional service to the Lord should be accepted. Mm, thank you very much. So Sri Prabhupada mentioned here that in the Srimad Bhagavatam also it is said that any activity which leads to devotional service to the Lord should be accepted. So the verse that Sula Prabhupada refers that from the <clears throat> third canto, third canto, chapter uh, 23, text number 56, the conversation between Devahuti and Kapila. So it is mentioned, Neha yat karma dharmaya. So Neha yat karma dharmaya. So any activities should lead one uh, to become Krishna conscious. Any karma should elevate one, actually. Any activities or karma should elevate one to the position of Krishna consciousness, meaning Krishna's devotee. So th this verse is Krishna's final opinion, as he said here, that all these activities should be performed without attachment or any expectation of result. So what attachment means? Attachment means actually attachment to the result of the activities. They should be performed as a matter of duty. This should be our mentality. We are performing our Swadharma <clears throat> as a matter of duty, just like Arjuna. His duty is to fight, so he has to fight. Whether he will be killed or he will kill, 
So that is not his business. His duty is just to fight, to serve Krishna, because Krishna ordered him to fight. In the next six verses, seven to twelve, Krishna will define tyaga renunciation according to the three modes of nature. So again, tyaga. Uh, this verse is explaining about tyaga. Tyaga means not renouncing the activities, but renouncing the uh, result of the activities, in which actually we can be uh, unaffected by the uh, the karma. <clears throat> So, ah, yes. Uh, uh, what, what are the uh, symptoms of renunciation in mode of passion? Ah, we will come to that. Just wait. <laughs> so we will come to that because text seven to twelve, we will be discussing about this renunciation according to the three modes of nature. <clears throat> it is there. Uh, one of the questions uh, in your student yeah. <laughs> they are given 8.6 18.6 so no actually the reference given is uh, wrong in that student handbook i was checking it it will be answered in the eight verse okay so okay. we'll come to that <laughs> text number seven prescribed duties should never be renounced if one gives up his prescribed duties because of illusion, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of in the mode of ignorance. So, like Arjuna, he was uh, trying to be a renounced person, but he is renouncing. He wanted to uh, he wanted to renounce his uh, swadharma prescribed duties because of being illusion. You know, too attached with the family members. No, I don't want to kill them. You know, let them enjoy the kingdom. So this is uh, in the mode of ignorance. <clears throat> it is said that a person in the renounced order of life should not cook for himself. <laughs> cooking for oneself is prohibited, but cooking for the Supreme Lord is not prohibited. This is a sannyas. Uh, <clears throat> rules for sannyas. A sannyas should not cook for himself. But Sri Prabhupada mentioned that cooking for oneself is prohibited, but when we cook for Krishna, it's all right. Similarly, a sannyas may perform a marriage ceremony to help his disciple in advancement in Krishna consciousness. If one renounces such activities, it is to be understood that he is acting in the mode of darkness. Yeah, Sri Prabhupada himself in the beginning, <clears throat> he was cooking for himself. Because nobody was there when he came to America. Nobody was there to help him, to assist him. He was staying in, uh, in the house of Gopal Agarwal. Gopal Agarwal. So <clears throat> there also Srila Prabhupada uh, actually uh, mixed uh, in the fridge. Srila Prabhupada mentioned that the vegetables that he he kept inside the fridge was mixed with meat, egg, uh, onion, garlic. But Srila Prabhupada didn't have any choice. So Srila Prabhupada uh, did his best. <coughs> and finally, he made a lot of followers. But even then also, Srila Prabhupada, uh, in many occasions, that he teaches his disciple how to cook. <laughs> because they don't know how to cook. These all are hippies. Uh, even Srila Prabhupada, uh, we see in the previous report, Srila Prabhupada mentioned the sannyasi should never have any contact with women. <clears throat> but Srila Prabhupada, he taught his uh, women disciple how to wear sari. How to wear sari. So Srila Prabhupada, uh, he wore the sari uh, to show the, the matajis how to wear sari. Uh, there's one. Prabhupada's disciple, she said that in the in the early age <coughs> of our Iskon, in the early days of our Iskon, so there was no sari. What they use? They use curtain. <laughs> they use curtain. They just wrap their body with curtain, and somehow or other, it appears like sari. <laughs> and Sri Prabhupada taught us how to wear sari. So 
we are seeing here that Srila Prabhupada, he is doing all these things seemingly like contradictive, little bit contradictive, because he is a sannyasi, but he's seeing actually everything in relation to Krishna. So this is the vision of the Uttama Adhikari, because he wants his disciple <coughs> looks nice, advanced in Krishna consciousness. So why uh, Srila Prabhupada is teaching uh, his lady disciple how to wear sari, for example, because that will be a great tool uh, for preaching. Uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, in uh, Lila Marita, we find the story that when the first time after, I think that uh, three years Srila Prabhupada in the West, so first time Srila Prabhupada came to uh, India, came back to India along with his uh, Western disciple. So everybody was wearing tila, wearing sari, wearing dhoti. So Prabhupada explained that this is actually a great tool to preach the Indians. So we see in the early age, uh, before Srila Prabhupada uh, went to America, he tried to establish the, <clears throat> what is that, devotees league, but that's also seemingly failed. He got like very less uh, positive response uh, from the Indians. But after Srila Prabhupada created uh, many Western disciples, and then he brought to India. So the Indians start thinking like, wow, because it is the nature of those who are uh, in India, or I mean to say in the Eastern countries, uh, we like to imitate the lifestyle of the Americans or European, because for us, like they are more advanced in knowledge or in whatever technology. So whatever their lifestyle, we also wanted to imitate that. <clears throat> so but preach to the American, European, and that's how actually the devotees start, start flourishing in India. When Srila Prabhupada came back along with his uh, white elephant, Srila Prabhupada referring his uh, Western disciple as white uh, elephant, dancing white elephant. <laughs> <clears throat> so, like that, Srila Prabhupada sees everything in connection to Krishna. <clears throat> Are sannyas and tyag the same or different? So this is from the surrender unto me. Though something they are different, Krishna's opinion is that uh, the renouncer of life and renunciation of fruits of work are in fact exactly the same. Indeed, Srila Prabhupada translates both word here as renunciation. <laughs> <clears throat> Text number eight. Who has not spoken from beginning okay uh chaitanya krishna chaitanya prabhu question comments no i didn't speak it you raise your hand yeah first to read verse ah okay yeah you can uh, read this one text number eight please <coughs> Anyone, 18.8, uh, .8, anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation. So, Vanamali Prabhu, this is the answer for that question. <clears throat> anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort it is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action yeah. never leads to elevation of renunciation. So the example is like, you know, uh, a grihasta is taking uh, sannyas because uh, too much fighting with the wife. So finally he give up the family life and take sannyas. <laughs> so this is one example. And that's happened. <laughs> <clears throat> That's happened sometimes uh, in the past that, you know, uh, that renouncing uh, family life to take sannyas because a lot of trouble or bodily discomfort and becoming renounced uh, artificially. 
but we have to understand what is the purpose of sanya's life to pursue spiritual life to pursue spiritual advancement can you read this krishna chaitanya prabhu <coughs> Purport. One who is in Krishna consciousness should not give up earning money out of fear that he is <coughs> performing fruitive activities. Hmm. If by working one can engage his money in Krishna consciousness, or if by rising early in the morning one can advance in advance his transcendental Krishna consciousness, one should not desist out of fear or because such activities are considered troublesome. Hmm. <clears throat> Text number nine. Let's call upon Lakshmi Rashinga Prabhu. Would you like to read this verse <clears throat> on the screen? Hare Krishna. Yes. O Arjuna, when one performs his prescribed duty only because it it ought to be done and uh, renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit. He, his renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness. <coughs> Prescribed duties must be performed with this mentality. One should not act without attachment for the result. He should be disassociated from the modes of work. A man working in Krishna consciousness in a factory does not associate himself with the work of the factory, nor with the workers of the factory. He simply works for Krishna, and when he gives up the result for Krishna, he is acting transcendentally. Mm. So can you elaborate a little bit more on this verse, like Sminar Singha Prabhu? Sure, Prabhu. <coughs> so, <clears throat> actually, here it it has been saying that um, um, one performs his prescribed duty only because ought to be done and renounce all material association and all att attachment to the fruit. His renunciation is said to be the mode of goodness. So even though we are working in the uh, materially, <coughs> but uh, we should not think that all these thing achievements are coming just because of my ability mm -hmm. or my greatness. We should never think like that. And um, just for the survival, if we are working, but still all the results, we should be leave it to the Supreme Lord. And we should also think always like it is a just because of the mercy of the Lord and as a servant of the Lord, we are working and not just because of our any greatness. Then it should be called as the mode of goodness. Mm. Thank you very much. Likes me nursing up from very nicely like explaining. Uh, yeah, if we reflect back, yeah. <clears throat> actually there are so many Leelas uh, in the early days of our ISKCON <laughs> that's local but still on the planet. For example, like uh, Brahmananda Prabhu. So Brahmananda Prabhu, he was uh, telling his story. <clears throat> you find this uh, video on the Prabhupada series actually. It is there available on YouTube. You can watch this actually different disciples of Srila Prabhupada, they are giving their uh, experiences to what they have done for Srila Prabhupada, their, so their association with Srila Prabhupada, direct contact like this. So there Brahmananda Prabhu mentioned that <clears throat> it just uh, two days, uh, he got a job in some school as a teacher. And then he joined the Brahmachari Ashram. He was a new bhakta, and then he approached Sula Prabhupada. Sula Prabhupada, should I quit uh, this job? Should I quit this job and join uh, the ashram as a full-time devotee? Sula Prabhupada said, no, no, no need. You continue your work, and as, uh, as long as you can serve, I mean, you can stay here in this ashram. You sleep here, you eat here, you go for work. After your work, you come back and do some service. So he did that, and all his money actually given to Srila Prabhupada. We see this also in the life of Jayananda Prabhu, the one who organized the Rathayatra in the West, San Francisco, for the first time. 
<clears throat> so he was working full time job, and he gave everything to Sila Prabhupada. Everything, not even a single, single dollar, single single cent. Uh, I would say like that. Uh, he kept for his personal thing. He gave everything to Sila Prabhupada. So when Jayananda Prabhu was detected uh, that he has some cancer, <clears throat> so actually uh, he was working. And then he stopped his job, he got his last salary. Uh, and then he wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada that uh, mentioning that this is my last salary for you. And that money was attached along with the letter inside the envelope. So that's like, uh, not only in the mode of goodness, I would say, but that's transcendental. Like what Srila Prabhupada mentioned in his profile, this kind of activities is not only uh, in the mode of goodness, but that is transcendental <clears throat> and yeah there are so many occasions actually pastimes uh, even like George Harrison also <laughs> George Harrison uh, asked La Prabhupada that Prabhupada should I save up uh, should I save up my long hair and join the ashram as a full-time devotee so Prabhupada said no 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 need you just continue like this preach like this because he's a great musician he's very famous so what happened if he saved his head? So nobody will, <laughs> nobody will, will listen to George Harrison because he's already famous like that. So just keep it like that. And you preach Krishna consciousness in that way. And when George Harrison asked for initiation, actually to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada said, you already initiated devotee. And George Harrison was stuck with wonder. What did you mean Srila Prabhupada? Yes, you are. Hari's son. You are the son of Hari. <laughs> you are the son of Hari. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the reason for Srila Prabhupada not giving initiation uh, for George Harrison, well, that because <clears throat> George Harrison was so busy and living in that kind of lifestyle, uh, he might be not be able to chant his prescribed rounds, uh, for example, or follow the rules and regulations strictly. But however, George Harrison was very helpful. And there is no doubt, uh, Srila Prabhupada said that there is no doubt George Harrison, he went back home, back to Godhead. When he left the body, he went home, back to Godhead. Srila Prabhupada mentioned. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada guaranteed, because Srila Prabhupada, uh, Srila Prabhupada was helped so much by George Harrison like the printing of the Krishna book, the printing of the Krishna book. How many of you have heard this past time of Shyama Sundar Prabhu asking for donation to George Harrison to print the Krishna book? Yeah, Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, we have heard this. <clears throat> so it is a very nice past time that that time uh, is gone. Srila Prabhupada didn't have a lot of money and he wanted to bring the Krishna book, uh, 10,000 copies, 1,000 or 10,000 copies. Anyway, it required a lot of lot of money. And then Prabhupada asked Shyama Sundar, uh, Shyama Sundar, can you go to George and ask for the money? Ask for the money. How much was that like? That's that's a lot, a lot of money. I forgot the exact number. And Shyam Sundar Prabhu, because uh, he's close to George Harrison, but you know, like asking uh, for big money, uh, he was feeling like reluctant. So what happened? Uh, because Shamshuna Prabhu thought that, okay, I just convey Srila Prabhupada's message. So he went to George Harrison's uh, residence and he came there and then they met. Uh, that was like at night, uh, at night, that was at night. <clears throat> and they have some regular talk, you know, how are you, how are you doing, this and that. And, and finally, before Shamsundar Prabhu left his house, George Harrison's house. So Shamsundar Prabhu finally said to George Harrison that, George, look, actually I came here uh, because Shila Prabhupada ordered me. He wants uh, some help. And George Harrison asked, what can I help? So Shamsundar Prabhu said, we wanted to print the Krishna book but we don't have money. So Srila Prabhupada asked you to sponsor, to print the Krishna book. It's for 1,000 copies. And 
and then George Harrison was asking how much will that cost and then he said that such and such amount that was like really big amount and George Harrison was silent and then Shamsundar Prabhu said okay I have done my duty and whether George will agree to support this or not it's up to him it's up to Krishna and what happened at that time immediately the lightning uh, and thunderbolt was you know like so loud, uh, so loud, and the electricity went off. <laughs> Immediately, like bang, the electricity went off. It just for three seconds. And then the electricity came back. And then they look at each other. George Harrison was smiling. And what he said, George Harrison, Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, you want to tell us what George Harrison said to Sham Sundar Prabhu? <laughs> <clears throat> so George Harrison said that how can I reject if Srila Prabhupada already sent the sign like this if I reject I'm going to die by Srila Prabhupada's thunderbolt <laughs> so he agreed to do that so George Harrison very much helpful in our movement and Srila Prabhupada said that even, even though he is not as, uh, initiated but his uh, deliverance is already assured. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So Krishna next described the symptoms of proper renunciation. Text number 10. The intelligent renouncer situated in the mode of goodness, neither hateful, of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work has no doubts about work <clears throat> so this is the symptom of those who are in the mode of goodness they are performing uh, their duties without any hesitation there is no doubt this is my duty okay i have to do it whether it is uh, will give a good result or not <clears throat> A person in Krishna consciousness or in the mode of goodness does not hate anyone or anything which troubles his body. He does work in the proper place and at the proper time without fearing the troublesome effects of his duty. Such a person situated in the transcendence should be understood to be most intelligent and beyond all doubts in his activities. That's clear. So those who are situated in goodness, they just perform their duty, <coughs> no doubt. Text number 11, it is indeed impossible for an embodied being to give up all activities, but he who renounces the fruits of action is called one who has truly renounced. Yeah, you see, as uh, we have discussed earlier that since we get this material body and material senses, and we cannot stop of doing something. The senses need uh, the senses need to be engaged somehow or other in some activities. But the 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 art here is that we have to do and renounce the fruits. What is the real renunciation means? To offer the fruit uh, for Krishna's pleasure. Nibanda Krishna Sambande Mitam Uchyate. So that's real renunciation. <clears throat> in contrast to that, the Falgu Vairagya, those who are pretending actually to renounce uh, something, uh, renouncing his work, his activities, and whatever, uh, you know, like possession, is renouncing in, uh, in the lower consciousness. Not, uh, he, he cannot see actually everything is connected with Krishna. Everything is connected with Krishna. Therefore, we have to somehow rather use our intelligence uh, to utilize everything in Krishna's service. So that's Yukta Vairagya. It is said in the Bhagavad Gita that one can never give up work at any time. Therefore, he who works for Krishna and does not enjoy the fruit, uh, the fruit of results, who offers everything <clears throat> to Krishna is actually a renouncer. There are many members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness who work very hard in their office or in the factory or some other place. And whatever they earn, they give to the society. Such highly elevated souls are actually sannyasis 
and are situated in the renowned Sura of Life. Uh, you see, Sura Prabhupada mentioned here that even if we are Grihasta, <laughs> our mentality should be like a sannyasi, should be like a person who is in the renounced order of life by utilizing uh, our uh, our wealth, uh, our body, our possession in Krishna service, 10%, 100%. Therefore, this is the art. Grihesu visatam chapi pulsa kusala karmana madvartaya tayamanam na bhandaya grihamataha. So this is the instruction by Lord Siva to Parvati. Na bhandaya grihamataha. So even if we are situated in Grihasta Ashram, Griha, na bhandaya, we are not bound by the result of our activities. What is the art? Grihesu visatam chapi pulsa kusala karmana. Madvarta yatayamanam. Just connect. Just offer everything to Krishna. Madvarta yatayamana to Krishna. Then, na bhandaya griha mataha. Sometimes we are thinking that, you know, the grihastas are fallen. Or sometimes we see also this kind of uh, scene uh, that when a brahmachari uh, just giving up his saffron dress, and planning to get married, he immediately feel like very much dejected. Now I am so fallen, you know, because I'm going to get married. Well, it is not the fact. As long as we are Krishna conscious, uh, offer everything to Krishna. Na bandaya griha mataha. Moksa dwara mapavritam. So moksa dwara mapavritam. The path of liberation is open. So what is that verse? I forgot how it started, but when we utilize uh, something which is uh, seemingly to bind us, like wealth, for example. So wealth is uh, alluring so much by which we can be bewildered and get bound in this material world. But if we utilize that wealth, moksa dwaram apavritam. Sadhusu krito moksa dwaram apavetam. So for the sadhus, because the sadhus can see everything in relation to Krishna, that moksa dwaram apavetam. <clears throat> He's not bound, but he gets liberation. So wealth is not bad. Uh, family life is not bad. Uh, it's just like knife is not bad. The matter is that how we utilize the knife. If we utilize the knife to kill somebody, so that is bad. But if you utilize the knife to operate, uh, to do some operation, so that knife will cure the disease of the person. So similarly, wealth, it is not bad. Money is not bad. But the matter is that how we utilize the money. If we utilize for the service of Krishna, so that's fine. But if we utilize for our own sense gratification, then it is condemned. <clears throat> The last verse, text number 12. Who has not spoken in this group? Everybody already says something. Okay, I'll take it. For one who is not renounced, the threefold fruit of action, desirable, undesirable, and mix, a cure after death. <clears throat> But those who are in the renounced order of life have no such result to suffer or enjoy. So whatever we perform in the present life, actually that will determine what we will get in the next life, what kind of body, in which family we born, whether we'll be rich or poor. So desirable means like we'll be born in the family of uh, aristocratic family, rich family, and then undesirable when we are, you know, full of suffering and mixed like in between, moderate. <laughs> but those who are in the renowned sort of life have no such result to suffer or enjoy. Because as we discussed earlier uh, in the previous classes, in the previous chapters, many times we talk about whether it is good or bad, uh, good, good punya or bad karma. Both are actually just like two sides of the coin. 
they are the same thing. They are the same thing. Binding, whether we go to heaven or we go to hell, still we are in the material world, in the material universe. Purport, a person in Krishna consciousness acting in knowledge <clears throat> of his relationship with Krishna is always liberated. Therefore, he does not have to enjoy or suffer the result of his acts after death. After that, what is our destination? We go back home, back to Godhead. So we don't enjoy our uh, credit, of uh, our uh, pious credit, or suffer for uh, our sinful activities. So those who are in Krishna consciousness, of course, Srila Prabhupada is talking about pure devotional service. Those who are engaged in pure devotional service always is always liberated. <clears throat> so Prabhupada said, unless you, so unless you, from the very beginning, you practice yajna, this is yajna, or if you are a grihasta, given charity, and when you take sannyas, you undergo tapasya, how will you understand this philosophy? It is not possible. In the Kali Yuga, however, the yajna is not possible as there are ritualistic yajna, sacrifice as recommended in the Vedas. That is not possible. It is very expensive. You have to acquire so much ghee and grains and so many other things, feed so many daily people. It is very difficult task to perform the real the, the, the ritualistic yajna. Therefore, Krishna has made easy. What is that? Yajna is sankirtana prayayari yajantihi smedasa. So the Grihasa actually should perform yajna every day, every single day, and give charity every single day. There is an injunction in Sastra that a Grihasta, before he eat, before he eats, he has to call upon somebody in the street. He has to shout, actually, minimum three times, loudly, whether anybody hungry outside there. If anybody hungry, please come. So three times he has to call uh, upon those who are uh, hungry in the street, those who are in need of food. Then after feeding those people, then the Grihasta can start his meal. <coughs> There is one, one joke, of course, I heard <laughs> whether it is true or not, but this is a Krishna consciousness joke. I heard this like many years ago. So one devotee was telling me that he lives in London. <clears throat> okay, he lives in London. He's a Gujarati. <laughs> Anybody from Gujarat? Nobody, I think. Please don't feel offended. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So don't take this seriously. This is a joke, okay? <laughs> so my friend from London he said that he lives in London and he has a friend from Gujarat. So he is a Gujarati. So because they are following uh, the scripture very strictly, you know. So they follow also this injunction. Uh, so a Grihasta, a householder, before uh, he eats, uh, he will call upon somebody uh, on the street. Then after that, uh, if anybody comes, he will feed, then he will start eating. If nobody answer, then he can start eating. So he said that his friend told me, uh, or he said that my friend told me that daily, I'm, you know, before I'm taking my meal, I always go out to the street and shout uh, whether anybody hungry outside there, please come and eat three times very loudly. But it is surprisingly, every single day I did that, nobody came. And then my friend asked, how come? Yes, because I said that in Gujarati. <laughs> so nobody understood. <laughs> Everybody speak English in London. <laughs> so he was shouting that three times in in his language local language so he did that and nobody came <laughs> <coughs> okay that was the end of our presentation <clears throat> in the chat here okay. what does a cure mean 
be received by someone in regular or increasing amount over time. All right. So whether any final comments or question before I close <coughs> this class? If there is no, I would like to thank you very much. There are six students here. Kumudaksa Prabhu, you want to say something? So, uh, I would... Okay, Wanamali Prabhu, yes, first. I have seen the Krishna book first time in uh... Made by Bhakti Chagu Maharaj. Hmm. That is the first time they have made a. In Abhachan, they have shown the first time. Thunderbolt and uh, electricity gone. I, I remembered the electricity, but. I, that only I part I remembered. Mm. Electricity gone. Yeah. <clears throat> Kumudaksa Prabhu, want to say something? Uh, no, Prabhu, actually. I just, it was. Okay. Thank you. All right, fine. Sorry, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Lakshmi Narasimha. Okay, Lakshmi Narasimha Prabhu. Prabhuji, one question. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, like me, like suppose if I am working outside and uh, uh, maybe all the time we may not think about the Krishna or um, of course that's uh, unfortunate not to be um, but uh, as we are doing the work and uh, um, we may not be thinking or all the time or maybe we are not uh, completely <laughs> detached or uh, so mm. how we can see like uh, maybe sometimes we are i mean of course just with all the mercy of the gurus and so we might be just at least chanting or in this connection we got it but we are not completely because we are interacting with maybe six to eight hours minimum mm. with uh, other people so shall we still i think that is not a goodness so how to consider this or uh, what is our, I mean, my position or? Yeah, thank you very much. This is a very practical question. I would say like that because most of us, you know, as we have started, sometimes due to some uh, circumstances, we are forced to work uh, under the karmis, for example, our boss, our, uh, our boss is a karmi, for example. Many devotees and many grihastas, they are doing like this, not only you. So, <clears throat> how to consider this? There is an explanation. To clean the body, uh, we use water and soap. Uh, and to clean uh, the speech, uh, satyam, truthfulness, will clean the speech. And then to clean uh, ourselves from the result of our activities is that by offering in charity, uh, by giving charity. So <clears throat> you may now working in some company, uh, outside company, let's say like that, which is owned by non-devotees. And you are associating with uh, non-devotees like this, you know, you can, uh, you are unable to think about Krishna all the time because of this work. One thing that you can do to uplift uh, your situation is that in order to not uh, bound by the result of the activities, just uh, give charity. So giving charity uh, for the grihastas, even though if you are working outside. So giving charity can purify your existence and also your wealth. So wealth will be purified when we give some part of our possession <clears throat> in charity to those who are uh, Krishna conscious or to temple, for example, or for the preacher especially. You can give charity in some amount. Uh, of course, Rupa Goswami uh, <laughs> demanding 50%, but I don't think so any uh, people can do that nowadays, but at least some percent, like at least Prabhupada mentioned 10% for Krishna consciousness movement, give to the temple. In that way, actually, uh, your wealth will be purified and your existence also will be purified by charity. Of course, chanting is there, 
and as much as we can try to retain our rounds nicely and follow the four regulatory principles especially when we are in the association of the known devotees like uh, eating for example this is very common example like eating something which is not offered because we are associating with the non devotees sometimes we become slacken in following this principle yeah but as much as we can so <clears throat> for the grihastas therefore charity is one of the best way how we can purify our existence and our wealth our possession will be purified just like we take bath using water and soap so our charity our wealth will be purified by charity our mind will be purified by meditation our word will be purified by truthfulness our behavior will be uh, behavior will be purified by non violence so things like this <clears throat> yeah krishna chaitanya prabhu mentioned here that could you please give the reference where prabhupad said 10% income we should give in charity thank you yeah i think it is in the nectar of instruction nectar of instruction that at least the prophet mentioned 10% i'll i'll find it the exact reference then i will send it to you yeah prophet said that at least 10% <coughs> thank you prabhu ji thank you so much hari krishna oh, i mean i'm i'm not uh, such a transcendent person you know but yeah, yeah. we are all actually trying of course now philosophically we we discuss all this matter and ultimately we are hoping that in one final day that we will apply all whatever we have discussed here <laughs> yeah thank you prabhu ji and related to that one question prabhu so yes. maybe uh, suppose uh, let us assume he is a uh, not a devotee and if he need some help or some people they say that um, of course we understand as a practical problem so some people they may need some money just mm-hmm. he is in a uh, survival something some problem so mm-hmm. some people uh, someone is argued but of course uh, i but just i would like to listen more so he, he, they say there is some people they say that uh, they are already uh, i mean uh, if we help them they will get more karma <laughs> uh don't help or someone is saying like that but when we think that um, uh i mean because as other soul as he is in a suffering we should help them and then we can advise other thing later but but be- someone says that already he is suffering just because he, that is his karma he is suffering and if we help them he will more suffer how to <laughs> just uh, like to learn uh, how to uh, yeah yeah how. yeah yeah i see uh well this is actually a relative uh, question i would say relative means you can get different answers from different perspective from different angle of sure. uh, viewer yeah. yeah sure so in yeah. my case yeah in my case for example that person is a non devotee right that person who is asking for help um in my case if i have money so i will take this opportunity as a mean of preaching okay as a mean of preaching mm. because okay. those who are in need actually uh, if they are in need you can uh, give help sana to listen you can preach them also because when you have money uh, you give help so that person will listen to you so take mm. this advantage as a preaching to krishna mentioned that chatur vidha bajant imam jana sukriti no jina artho artho jigya sura artati artho means those who are suffering artati means those who are in need of wealth so yeah in the beginning stage uh, just be krishna's uh, krishna's tool krishna's uh, what is this nimitta matram bhava shavya sachi krishna's uh, what is the correct word not tool but krishna's instrument <laughs> be krishna's instrument be krishna's hand huh? there is a possibility of that person may later becoming devotee because in another hand also we are showing an example that uh, the krishna consciousness people they are so you know compassionate and 
nice, uh, behaving nicely. They are very helpful. And they may put some sympathy uh, to our movement if we help. So in that way, we can encourage also if we, if we have, but once, twice you can help, but more than that, I think it is not very advisable. So like that, you can advise uh, that you can, you can give some philosophy also, you are suffering now because of your karma. So that's how our preaching can be started. You are suffering because of your karma. So just accept it. You cannot avoid your karma. Some people, even in India, they don't believe in the laws of karma, unfortunately, right? But if we approach uh, in that uh, sincere mood, actually, we want to help them. So they may later taking up Krishna consciousness. <coughs> so take it as a uh, opportunity to preach also. If you, you have extra, if you have extra, and if you have different vision, uh, the vision of that actually everybody is Krishna's son, Vasudeva Kutumbakam. If you really have that sincere vision, you will see uh, just like the Uttama Dikari, everybody is Krishna's devotee. So see him as part and parcel of Krishna. <coughs> Intention sure. is also matter. When we are doing something, it is not about what we are doing, but the intention behind that also. And of course, you can give prasadam. That's the best way. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, I think I will just read one uh, chat here and then we'll close. So this is from Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. He said in the chat, that not that out of $100, 99% for my wife and 1% for Krishna. No, not like that. One should sacrifice at least 50%. If he cannot sacrifice this, Brahmachari, Sanyasis, they have sacrificed their everything, 10%. The Grihastha, they cannot do that because they have got wife, children, therefore 50%. So these are the prescribed rules and regulation for executing Krishna consciousness. Anyway, if one cannot sacrifice 10%, let him sacrifice at least 1%, 2%. The more one, what is that? The, the more he has does, sorry, the more he does, that is more he becomes free from bondage. And the more he uses his earning for sense verification, the more becomes bound up by the laws of material nature. Yeah, nice. At least 1%. If not 10%, at least 1%. At least something. But I remember there is a statement that 10%. Maybe not from Srila Prabhupada. I was uh, attending Bhakti Sastri. I think that was uh, Bhakti Brihat Bhagavad Swami Maharaj. He was teaching at the time nature of instruction. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Jai Sula Prabhupada, one chakra patarubya chakra passing to the Eva chat. Mati Tadam Bani Bhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.